In today's video, we're going to learn how to make this air plant pot hanger in Fusion 360. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe for jumping right on in. So the idea from this video stemmed from the Autodesk Fusion 360 YouTube channel. Design a 3D printed lampshade in Fusion 360. And I really liked the techniques that were used in this tutorial. So I figured I would create my own spin on it. I have this sort of 3D printed air plant pot that is then suspended from this basket. Uh, and I'll probably show an overlay of the actual 3D print itself. All you need to get started are a 3D printer or accessibility to using a 3D printer. There are a lot of resources that you can use to 3D print your own designs like Proto Labs, for example, or Fathom. Granted, they are a little more expensive, but I'm sure you could find a, a rapid prototyper in your area using a resource such as Yelp. The only external thing aside from a 3D printer is going to be this a uh, handmade pot hanger plant hanger pot holder, <laughs> great naming here, uh, on AliExpress. It's only $4.71. So if you do in fact have access to your own 3D printer, then this project really should only run you just under five bucks. I'm sure there's a little bit of shipping cost through AliExpress, but as long as you're willing to wait for the product, you can get started on the 3D print and the design. So I'm gonna go over my exact workflow that I used. Uh, this is the first kind of air plant bowl example that I did. So it was just kind of something quick to get the concept. But then this is kind of what we're working towards. I, I did not create or generate this air plant model. This is an STL file that I found on Sketchfab. I'll leave a link to that in the description below. But huge shout out to the user Unique Idea Studio. It really looks so great and it kind of emphasizes just how cool the concept of this product is. This is my updated design. I used again the features or the, the workflow demonstrated uh, by the Autodesk Fusion 360 YouTube channel and put my own spin on it, of course. So again, you don't need to fill this up with soil, hence why it can be so open and, and why we can incorporate this design. One of the cool features that Fusion 360 has is this volumetric lattice feature. Now, what we're essentially doing is creating a shelled volumetric lattice without having to pay for that extension. So I think that's also a really cool uh, feature within this workflow because you could change the shape of this and then pattern it around and you're gonna change the lattice and the bowl design, uh, which is really unique. I, I also did another uh, bowl structure just for a demonstration here. Again, this is just an example of how you can optimize this in association to your own design. So let's get started here up at the top left. We will select create sketch and then we'll create a sketch on this uh, front plane here just by left clicking. We'll do C for circle. Uh, we'll select the origin and then we'll just left click again and hit escape. D for dimension and left click the edge of this circle. And I'm just gonna make this 160 millimeters. It's the size of the bowl that I've already um, done my proof of concept on and it, it works pretty well. All right, next we're going to go over to the line, left click on line, left click on the origin again, and then just make sure uh, it is horizontal and left click on the circle again. If it's not horizontal, what you can always do, left click on horizontal vertical and left click on your line. Uh, L for line and then we'll left click on the origin, left click on the circle again, just for an example, hit escape. We will say that I didn't actually make that vertical, so we'll hit horizontal vertical and it's just automatically gonna snap there. So C for circle again, and we're gonna click on the origin, left click before we get to the edge of this outer circle, hit escape, D for dimension, and then left click on both of these circles and we're gonna define our wall thickness for the bowl. I used two, seemed to work very well, so we're gonna go with that, hit escape. And we are all set for our revolve. So we will select finish sketch and then what we're going to do, of course, is left click on revolve. Uh, we will left click on just this quarter of the circle here that we have sectioned off. And then we'll left click on axis. 
And we can either left click on the line or you can left click on the origin axis either way. Um, left click, there we go. And make sure it says 360 degrees and then left click on OK. So there we go, we've already got our bowl. Um, and the next step, and we are going to create a, left click on create sketch. I'm gonna create a sketch on this top plane here and then do C for circle, left click on the origin and then left click again and hit escape. And then do D for dimension, left click on the circle we just created and we can make this maybe 50 millimeters. I can't exactly remember uh, the overall diameter that I created, but this should most definitely work. Again, all of these dimensions are subject to uh, preference, and uh, maybe not the wall thickness. <laughs> you can, uh, I, I wouldn't go super low, but certainly, you know, this diameter is going to be just the hole that this goes through. So you certainly don't want a hole at the bottom that's going to be so large that the air plant that you have is going to fall through. So just, just keep that in mind as we're modeling this. And we're going to left click on finish sketch and then left click on the circle extrude and then let's just drag this by holding down our left mouse button making sure that it goes through the entire geometry of the bowl and then left click on okay great okay and now comes the fun part so this is where the techniques in that video demonstration are just it, it's really cool actually how they went about it because it's it's just thinking about designing in in a different way by creating a solid structure and then you'll see what we do we we actually use a an intersection feature okay so we will left click on line we'll left click at this origin and we'll just left click beyond the length of the bowl or the height of the bowl and then hit escape P for project, just to reference, I want to reference this top line here, and I want to reference the bottom, and we'll hit enter. Great. Um, let's go ahead and left click on these and just hit X to turn them into construction lines. Um, great. And then we will keep this simple, and we'll just use a line command. So left click on the left side of your construction line making sure that it's coincident on the top of this uh, bowl. And then again, doing something very similar on the bottom of the little bowl, ensuring that you select the bottom line and then hit escape. So what I like to actually, let's do that same thing one more time. We'll make another left click and left click, hit escape. And then let's use the parallel command and select both of these and hit escape. Now I want to give a distance to define the thickness of our ribs that we're going to pattern around and hit escape. Great. And what you'll notice is it's kind of, we haven't defined the angle of this that's subjective to your design. And we also haven't made this, um, symmetric across this axis. That's why we made that in the first place. So let's do line command again. We'll select this point in our origin. And then we'll also select this bottom right point and the center circle or the center line center circle and hit escape. And what we want to do is control select these go into our constraints here and then left click on equal. What that's going to do is just going to make it symmetric around this line, this center line that we created earlier, um, so that from the top to the bottom, it's a it's a symmetric kind of uh, profile. And now we're going to define. We'll do D for dimension. We'll define uh, this angle here. Uh, I think what I did is like sixty five usually worked pretty well so we'll just keep actually let's do let's do 60. uh a little wide okay 65 maybe 70. all right i like the look of 70 we'll use that uh and then let's hide the body and what we want to do we want to make sure that this is a closed sketch so actually let's let's left click on the lines that we made here so left click on this guy and hit x to make it into a construction line and left click on this one and hit X as well. Great. And then let's go to line and let's just close off this profile that 
we're trying to create. Left clicking on all these points and hitting escape at the end so that we've got this blue shaded area, meaning that it's a closed sketch. We can show the body again. Um, shift middle click to turn the model and we will finish sketch. Looking great. So now what we're gonna do, I'm gonna select the sketch profile that we just made and hit extrude. Uh, and then we're going to do symmetric and just drag one of the arrows and great, except for the fact that we are not going to cut or join, we're gonna use the intersect feature. And what you'll notice it does is it takes the surface profile, so the bowl that we previously created, including the wall thickness, and then creates two separate bodies from these on either side of our extrusion. So we'll left click on OK, and that's exactly what we want. Now you might be going, what are we going to do with this? And I will show you. What we're going to do is go into pattern. So left click on create here and go into pattern, and then we're going to do circular pattern. The object that we want to pattern, we've got two bodies here that we're going to pattern. You can select this front one first. Left click on that in objects and then ensure that you left click on axis. And because we modeled this the way that we did, we can select this origin uh, Y axis and pattern around that axis. Look at how cool this, I mean, <laughs> this looks pretty great. I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> um, and so let's maybe do like 25. Looking great. So 25 is going to be the number of objects that are patterned around the 360 uh, degrees. So select OK. And there we go. Now you might be wondering, well, what are we doing with this one? We're going to do the exact same thing, except this one's going the opposite direction. So what is going to result is this cool kind of patterning um, latticing look, I guess, if you will. So let's go ahead and select body two in the bodies um, in the feature or the design tree over to the left. And then we'll go to create again, pattern, circular pattern, and select the axis. And we'll select the same one. Make sure that we have the same number that we're patterning. For uh, my example, it's 25. So we'll keep it at 25 and then select OK. And there we go, like that's it. I mean, we're basically all the way there for creating this super cool air plant bowl. Um, I mean, I think it looks super unique. So you can mess around with the number uh, or the quantity that you wanna pattern. Of course, the less you have, the more open it will be. Uh, and the more you have, the more closed off it will be, right? So it's kind of a personal preference uh, and then the last step, I know there's only one more step actually to create the bowl. Uh, we're going to go over to create sketch, sketch on this right plane here. And then we're going to remember the diameter that we created the bowl in the first place. For my example, it's 160. Select the origin, left click again, hit escape, D for dimension, and then enter 160. And we're going to do the same thing, but left clicking at the origin and left clicking before the edge of the outer circle. I'm going to do D for dimension, left clicking on both the circles and giving it a dimension of two for wall thickness. Now what we're doing here is we're creating basically like a lip for the bowl. You don't necessarily have to do it, but it's going to be easier and it's going to give it some more structure to the top. So it's not going to be as easy to kind of bend and fold. So I like to do this. Um, Let's actually, let's go up to, actually, okay. Left click on the origin and then ensure that you uh, keep it at horizontal and left click again, ensuring that the line just goes beyond the profile that we just created. And then what we can do is we can left click on that and we can go to modify, left click on offset. And we could drag this down to, I mean, this is also subjective. So I'll just do maybe four millimeters for, uh, the thickness here and we will shift middle click we want to ensure that we can select this great so that's a closed off profile and we'll just do finish sketch i usually would clean up this sketch a little bit but honestly for the purpose of this model it's okay 
We'll left click on revolve here. And I already had this selected, but if in case you didn't, uh, you'd see profile and then you'd want to select the profile, left click on axis, and then left click on the origin axis again. Now it's going to represent this operation as cut initially, but what we want to do is we actually want to join it together because we want to join with the previous geometry that we just made. The benefit of doing this one simple operation as well, as you'll see in a second, if you look on the model tree over to the left, what it's doing is it just merged all of those into one single body. So it's really cool in the sense that Fusion just basically merged all of this, all of these features. We have got one, two, three, four sketches and all of these bodies, which would have been 50, right? We had 25 and 25. And just because we joined them at the top, now we've got one body that we can then 3D print. This looks super cool in my opinion. Uh, it's not hard to make. And all you have to do now is go into 3D print. So left click at the top left here, 3D print. I use 3MF files. You could also do an STL. Select your object and then preview the mesh. You can have your mesh refinement on high, medium, low. I always use high. And then you select OK. And that STL or 3MF file is then ready for 3D printing. I also made a little hook um, that you can use uh, to mount this. I'm not going to go through how to model it because it's pretty simplistic, but I will leave a link in the description below. Um, to my Thingiverse file if you'd like to 3D print this uh, for wall mounting as well. Thanks so much for listening. If you guys found any value in this, feel free to like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll catch you in the next one. Thanks.